A couple of drugs have made it into the drug hall of fame. They're household names and widely prescribed, maybe too widely prescribed. Aspirin is one of those star performers. It's an overachiever. Its initial claim to fame stemmed from its ability to relieve pain in the moment. Headaches, toothaches and hangovers all respond to that little white pill. And around the globe, the pill is almost universally available without a prescription. So it's part of every man's pharmacological toolkit. But its superstar status extends way beyond pain relief. It's one of the meds used to combat cardiovascular disease. It's routinely prescribed to people at high risk of suffering a heart attack. And there's plenty of science backing up its efficacy. A recent meta-analysis of 15 studies confirmed aspirin use is associated with a lower risk of a heart attack compared to controls. And many people opt to self-prescribe it, believing swallowing a baby aspirin every day is an elixir for health. So, is it? Should you be proactive and include an aspirin a day in your health regimen? Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore the cardiovascular power of a painkiller and the pros and cons of taking a baby aspirin every day. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, all drugs give and they take. Whether a drug is right for you depends on your situation. To consider your situation, it's helpful to understand how low-dose aspirin actually works. To do this, we need to eavesdrop on cell conversations. Cells are continuously chatting to the cells in their vicinity via the icosanoid language. Now, listening in on cell chit-chat is quite difficult because the level of these chemicals is extremely low and they only exist for a very brief period of time. Scientists are still trying to learn the language, but they have identified a number of these chemicals. Some of the more well-known chemicals in the language are prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and thromboxins. The language has lots of words, each carrying its own particular message. Now, translating all of the words is very complex, so to keep things simple, scientists just translate the gist of the conversation. The conversation between the cells is either happy, everything is okay, and this message is communicated by the so-called good icosanoids, or the conversation is very negative. I'm in trouble. Help! This message is communicated by the so-called bad icosanoids. Now, when it comes to cardiovascular health, the conversation of platelets matters. Platelets are also sometimes called thrombocytes, but they're not actually really cells at all. They are little bits that have broken off a giant cell called a megakaryocyte. Platelets function as a biological polyfiller that is used to plug holes and hold things together. But in order for them to be useful, they need to be sticky when there is a hole and not sticky when there isn't. They know what to do because they listen to the icosanoids. When they hear a cell screaming in distress, they immediately respond and join in the hysteria, calling out loudly to draw attention to other platelets via the production of thromboxins. Scientists classify thromboxins as bad icosanoids because they're being produced when there is trouble. But in the big scheme of things, thromboxins are most helpful. They help the platelets turn sticky, so they start to join up with one another in a process called platelet aggregation. Aggregated platelets plug holes and avert crisis 
situations. The cells lining the blood vessels in people with cardiovascular disease tend to be sending out the message, help, I'm in trouble, all of the time for a variety of reasons. High sugar levels cut into the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. There's also hormone imbalances, which can precipitate shortages of oxygen. And high blood pressure creates pressure in the pipes, which causes little tears in the blood vessels, which need to be plugged. But endothelial cells are not the only ones activating the platelets. Rogue bacteria sometimes also send out fake messages of distress, tricking the platelets to come to their rescue they use the platelets to create floating bacteria castles, and big castles block blood vessels with disastrous consequences. Whenever blood vessels spring a leak, the platelets rush in to plug up the hole. Checks and balances should keep the plug size in proportion to the hole size. Unfortunately, if you have bad body chemistry, Platelet pumping can get a bit out of proportion to the size of the hole, so the little plug morphs into a blood-stopping block, depriving cells in the neighborhood of life-sustaining oxygen, and death and destruction follows. How big the block is and where the block is determines what goes wrong. In an ordinary blood vessel, the block is a thrombosis. In a cardiac artery, the block is a myocardial infarction or heart attack, and in a brain blood vessel, the block causes a stroke. Big blocks in the wrong place can kill. So, how does aspirin work? Well, officially, aspirin breaks an enzyme known as the cyclooxygenase enzyme, and this puts a stop to cell talk because it terminates eicosanoid production. Now, this action of aspirin is actually a little bit unusual. Most drugs that target enzymes work by interfering with enzyme activity. Only a handful of drugs actually permanently break an enzyme when they interact with it. Aspirin really breaks the enzyme. And it's this ability that gives it its cardiovascular superpower. Since cyclooxygenase is one of the main enzymes producing the eicosanoids, all cells are muted because the enzyme no longer works all eicosanoids are impacted. Exactly what is made by the cyclooxygenase enzymes depends on the cell type and membrane composition. Interestingly enough, diet influences the membrane composition. Diets rich in linoleic acid, this is the fatty acid that is dominant in vegetable and seed oils, creates more bad eicosanoids. So it inadvertently contributes to inflammation. On the flip side, consuming omega-3s promotes the production of good eicosanoids. By breaking the cyclooxygenase enzyme, aspirin ensures no messages, good or bad, get through. Traumatic events experienced by the cells lining the blood vessels largely go unnoticed. But it is a temporary effect. The gag on ordinary cells only lasts for a very short period of time because aspirin doesn't stick around in the body for very long. As soon as the aspirin has left the body, the body cells immediately start making new enzyme and resume conversations. This means endothelial cells can scream blue murder when they get hurt. But platelets are not so lucky. They are silenced permanently. Because remember, they're not really cells. It turns out that they don't have the equipment that would allow them to replace the destroyed cyclooxygenase enzyme, like regular cells. So an encounter with aspirin means the platelet's enzyme is broken forever. 
they cannot be activated. The platelets float around for the rest of their lives, unable to polyfill anything. No working platelets means even if there are screams for help, the platelets can't help because they cannot stick together to form a plug. On the plus side, no plug means no blockage of blood vessels, so you're less likely to have a heart attack. But other organs can and do experience collateral damage. The gastrointestinal system is particularly vulnerable. So is the brain. What many people don't realize is approximately 20% of strokes are the result of bleeds, not blocks. It's a delicate balance. And platelets are not the enemy per se. The problem all starts with bad body chemistry. The platelets misinterpret the signals, getting all fired up. And it's this overzealous response that is the problem. This arming platelets is not always the way to go. Current guidelines do not recommend everyone takes a baby aspirin. And if you choose to do so, you want to do what you can to mitigate the risks and maximize the benefits. Need a little help creating the kind of body chemistry that platelets thrive in? Browse the Better Body Chemistry blog for science-based tips and strategies. And if you want a little personalized help, sign up for a day of Oxa. You can find the link in the description below. Begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is contemplating taking a baby aspirin every day? Share this video with them so they can weigh up the pros and cons and make an informed decision. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.